Absolutely. And anybody using a continuous glucose monitor, try my hacks and you will see the difference in your glucose levels. And anybody who cannot afford a glucose monitor yet, my hacks work even if you don't have a monitor. That's what's cool. So number one hack that is incredibly easy, that has fantastic evidence supporting it is eat your food in the right order. So uh -huh. yes. So anybody listening, if you're about to have a meal, look in front of you. Let's say you have some chicken, some broccoli, and some potatoes, okay? If you eat the elements of this meal in a particular order, you can reduce the glucose spike of the meal by 75%. This means less aging, less inflammation, less weight gain, fewer cravings, etc. The right order is vegetables first, protein oh. and fats second, and starches and sugars last. And so when we do this, when we eat our vegetables first during a meal, the fiber in the vegetables lands in our stomach, then in our upper intestine, coats the walls of our intestine with this viscous mesh, and then any starch or sugars you eat afterwards will be absorbed to a lesser extent in your bloodstream, mm, mm. therefore smaller glucose spike. But you're eating the exact same thing. And this is so cool. And so many people send me messages like, I just simply changed the order in which I ate my food. I didn't yep, change yep. what I ate. And things started changing yeah, for me. Yeah, that's the number one really. So, cool so it's hack. interesting. I often recommend people take something called PGX or polyglycoplex, which is a derivative of cognac root. Cognac is uh, a Japanese tuber, like a root vegetable, that is made into noodles. Uh, it's actually used a lot in Japanese cooking, and it's very viscous and it absorbs fifty times its weight in water. So if you take a, some of this powder beforehand, or even the capsules, it basically acts like a sponge, absorbs all the water, and slows the absorption of everything. So you get your glucose doesn't spike very cool i mean this is really super powerful um another one that people love is vinegar i don't know if you know about this mark it's like Tell it's us. incredible so the hack is before your meals take a tall glass of water like the one I'm, I'm holding now so this is about you know twice the size of a regular glass and pour into it one tablespoon of vinegar it can be any type of vinegar my favorite is apple cider vinegar but you know white wine vinegar rice vinegar also work and drink it up to 30 minutes before your meal. And in the studies, the scientists say that the effect of vinegar is almost the same as the effect of medication given to diabetics to reduce glucose spikes. Why? By Why just does it doing work? this, because there's a molecule in vinegar called acetic acid. And acetic acid does two really cool things. One, well, that's actually what vinegar is it's acetic acid, right? It's, Absolutely. It's, right. Absolutely. Um, there's also water in vinegar, right? So it's, that's one of the molecules in vinegar. It's acetic acid. So it goes into your stomach and it talks to this enzyme called alpha amylase. And alpha amylase's job is to break down starch into glucose. And it tells that enzyme, hey, girly, mm -hmm. please slow down your roll, slow your roll. And so that enzyme works slower. So the breakdown mm. of starches into glucose happens slower. That's number oh. one. So slower delivery of glucose into your bloodstream later on. So Number you take two, the vinegar, Mark. the vinegar, you take it like a spoonful before? You, you should it dilute in it in water just to be safe. Yeah. So a spoonful. In the studies, you can do one tablespoon. Um, you can do two tablespoons. Personally, one tablespoon is what I use because it's just two tablespoons starts being a lot of vinegar in your glass of water. So one <laughs> tablespoon is what I like. Yeah. And the second thing it does, which is incredible, is that it goes to your muscles and it says, hey, muscles, as soon as glucose gets into the bloodstream, soak it up store it as glycogen in mm, the muscles. Mm. Don't let it float around. Wow. And so by these two mechanisms, by these two mechanisms, glucose is broken down at a slower rate in your stomach. And as soon as it arrives in the bloodstream, it gets soaked up. As a result, glucose spike reduced by up to 30%. And this matters because then you don't have the glucose crash. You don't have the cravings. You don't start that cravings roller coaster that so many of us are on. Yet you're eating the exact same food as before. Amazing. And, and that's two hacks. So we've got the timing yes. of when you eat, what you eat when, right? Vegetables, yes. protein, and starch. Yes. And then the vinegar before you eat. What else? Uh -huh. So if anybody is still having a sweet breakfast, this is a very important hack. Have and a savory breakfast. Of course, nobody breakfast. listening to this podcast ever eats a sweet <laughs> breakfast because they've been listening to this podcast and they know that we should not have dessert for breakfast. But just in case you haven't heard many of the podcasts, just in case this is the up. first podcast you listen to. <laughs> Have a savory breakfast. So in the studies, what they've done is they've taken two groups of people and they give them, they've given them two breakfasts 
one of two breakfast, same number of calories. We know calories don't count, but still it's important to mention this. One group had a breakfast that spiked their glucose levels. The other group had a breakfast that kept their glucose levels steady. What happened was in the group that had the spiky breakfast, they got hungry again after two hours. Whereas the group uh -huh. that had the steady glucose breakfast didn't get hungry for five hours. So the curve, yeah, of course, the curve of your breakfast really determines how you're going to feel for the rest of the day and whether you're going to feel in control and connected to your body or whether walking by that bakery is going to give you an irresistible urge to buy all the cookies like it used to be for me. I used to have a Nutella crepe for breakfast every morning growing up, Mark. And by 1030, I was starving. I mean, Nutella it was Nutella crepe. Yeah, that, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm recovered now, I'm recovered. And if I really want a Nutella crepe, what I do is I have it after lunch or dinner as a dessert, and I have some vinegar before. So that's another hack. You know, if so you want something put vinegar sweet, on your cookies, is that, is that the thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pour I'm vinegar sure all over my over cookies. Well. <laughs> my friends love me when I come to parties. <laughs> no, it's, it's so it's having, a, you know, the vinegar in the water before you eat the sweet thing, having the sweet thing after a meal, and also then, using your muscles for 10 minutes. So your muscles are really your biggest ally in reducing your glucose spikes. And so yeah. what I recommend, it's another hack. After your meals, use your muscles for 10 minutes. Top favorites include dancing to your three favorite songs really loud in your living room, <laughs> going for a walk with your dog, doing the dishes, the laundry, whatever. Use your muscles. That way you'll curb the spike and you'll feel better. That's a really important point. I think people don't realize this, but the data is so compelling on what you're saying, which is if you just take a walk after dinner for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, you will see a dramatic change in your metabolism and your blood sugar. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's really incredible. And this works particularly well to combat the post-meal sleepiness that a lot of us feel. If you just use your muscles afterwards, you have all this energy again because you're not experiencing such a big crash. And if you can't go outside and you're just home and you're watching, for example, a TV show after dinner or a movie, people can get really creative. So you could do like, you could hold a plank in front of your couch while you're watching the movie. You could get some kettlebells and do some bicep curls, whatever works, whatever floats your boat, but that'll really help your body deal with the glucose coming through. Amazing. What else? You've said 10 things. There's a lot more. I know. I'll give you one more, but then the rest are in my book, Glucose Revolution. <laughs> one more is putting clothes on your carbs. So what do I mean? Do not putting let your clothes carbs... Clothes on your carbs. Uh-huh. Don't let no your carbs... No naked carbs? Walk. No naked carbs. No <laughs> naked carbs. <laughs> so anytime What's a naked eating, carb? <laughs> uh -huh. So a naked carb is sugar or starch that you're eating on its own. Naked. You just eat it naked and it lands naked and it creates a big glucose spike. So to put clothes on your carbs, what you do is anytime you eat something sweet or something starchy, you make sure to put some protein, fat, or fiber on it. You put some mm. clothes on that. So mm. example, I'm going to take the chocolate cake example. I put Greek yogurt on it if I ever want it in the middle of the day. If you want a piece of sourdough bread, put some avocado on it. Yeah. Put some butter on it. If you ever want to eat some rice, have some eggs with it, some smoked mm. salmon, some greens mm. that you saute. That's brilliant. I think, I think the, the idea that we need to not be eating any of this stuff in a way that spikes our blood sugar is key. And what we're learning and what you learned through measuring your blood sugar for years and tracking everything is how different foods affect you. But you know, the, the interesting thing is that what might affect you might not affect somebody else and what affects somebody else might not affect you. So can you talk about the differences in glucose metabolism from person to person, depending on their genetics and even their microbiome? Absolutely. So when I started discovering the world of glucose monitoring, I set a few of my friends up with one as well, and we tested the same foods. So for example, you know, we would eat the same cookie and then compare our glucose spikes. Wow. Turns out mine were always bigger than other people's. And I was like, darn it, I really love cookies. And so I started thinking, you know, what does this mean? Why is my spike so much bigger than my friend Luna's spike? What's going on here? Well, many things could be going on. So as you mentioned, microbiome could be a factor, hydration level, tiredness, how well we had slept the night before, muscle mass, obviously, because your muscles soak up glucose, insulin sensitivity, 
so you know how metabolically healthy we are um and just m many many more things the phase of your menstrual cycle your stress levels there's a lot of stuff going on there so it was really interesting to notice what choices might be better for my glucose levels compared to other people but i kept coming back to the fact that the science shows that the hacks work in all of us so if me mm. and my friend who both ate the cookie had both put some clothes on the cookie let's say you know 10 almonds both mm. of our spikes would have been proportionately smaller than the naked cookie spike. Mm. So you have to keep that in mind. These principles work for all of us, but then if you have the opportunity to use a glucose monitor, you might discover much more personalized and in-depth you know, preferences that your body has. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here, chia seeds are a great source of omega-3 fats. They have more calcium than milk, and they're a great source of anti-inflammatory compounds, and they're great for glowing skin and mental health and clarity and much, much more. Chia seeds have 10 grams of